Eagles are 10 and 1, best team in the league situationally, great roster, got to the Super Bowl last year. They are so good in close games. I mean, I've never seen anything quite like it, right? But is there a downside to that? Oh, there is. We went back seven years, Super Bowl champs, 10 plus point wins. You see, teams that win the Super Bowl flex. They blow out teams. Now, you know that in college, but it's true in pro football. If you go to the last seven Super Bowl champs, Patriots had 10 wins over 10 points. Eagles, 2017, Nick Foles, 7. Patriots, 8. Chiefs, 7. Bucks, 8. Rams, 6. Chiefs, 7. If you go back a decade, there's only one exception. Denver Broncos, 2015, but that was that Brock Osweiler, old Peyton Manning circus year, right? Like they couldn't get the quarterback thing right. And that was also the best defense we've all probably seen in the last 10 years. Philly doesn't have that. In fact, in NFL history, Philadelphia has the second worst point differential for any team that's won 10 of their first 11. They don't flex because they can't flex. For the record, the two current teams that look like, historically, they will win a Super Bowl. Take a deep breath. Dallas and San Francisco both have seven blowout wins. Philadelphia's got two. Philadelphia went to overtime with Washington and was outplayed at home. They were in a competitive game with the awful Patriots. They've trailed, I think, at half last four games. The numbers don't lie here. College football national champions, be it Georgia or Michigan or Oregon, the three best teams in the country, they've got a half dozen blowouts. Cowboys blowouts, Niners blowouts. Last decade, everybody but the 2015 Broncos blowouts. And again, that team had a great defense, maybe the best in the last 10 years. And you could say, oh, Colin, you're really reaching here. Am I? Let's go back to the last several years. Who was the best team last year in one score games? It was the Vikings. They were 11 and 0. And quick exit from the playoffs. Well, what about the year before? Well, let's go to 2018, the Cowboys. 9 of 10 wins, one score games. How did the playoffs go? They lost early. Seahawks 2019, remember that team? Russ Cooking. 10 of 11 wins, one score games. Seahawks out early, lost in the divisional round. History tells you how it works. College football, we've always understood it. The natty, the champions, blow people out, like half their schedule, sometimes more. But it works that way in the NFL, too. You flex, lopsided. San Francisco going to Pittsburgh in the opener, beating them by three touchdowns. Dallas crushes teams, probably crushes Seattle tonight. Philadelphia squeaks by even against average to bad teams. I love them situationally, but I like that one Cowboy team and the Seahawk team and the Viking team. This is their reality. But Kyle Shanahan says, I still don't understand why we're favored going there. This is not a criticism. This isn't really even opinion. And this is an opinion-based show. It's just data and facts. Super Bowl champs got to have about six, seven flexes. Roll over teams. Suffocate them. Pin them down. Pull away. Philly doesn't have very many. Um, all right, let's talk Cowboys. They play tonight. They'll beat Seattle. It's got 33-17 written all over it. Geno Smith, a pick. Dak throwing for 275-plus yards. Dallas is a great team at home, a great favorite. They don't lose at home against average teams. Seattle's defense right now is below average. It does feel like a Dallas win. Who knows? Um, it, it's interesting. I'll sit home like the rest of you and watch tonight. But what I keep going back to, and, and sometimes, um, you know, in our, I, I'm a big believer in this. Like if I was a pilot and, uh, you know, I get a weather forecast like pilots do before the flight, we got a storm that just moved in. I would alter my route, right? If I was a stockbroker and I have loved a stock for seven years and then I got some information that the CEO is selling his stock, I would sell mine. 
I've never understood loyalty to old news. I don't think it's flip-flopping. I think it's smart. New information, new opinion. Mike McCarthy is not my favorite NFL coach, and I stand by that. Situationally, I just don't trust him late. But I do keep coming back to this. We all bang on Mike McCarthy. Got to be honest, it's the best Dak I've ever seen. So Mike McCarthy with Brett Favre went 21-11. and 11. Very good. With Aaron Rodgers, he went 98-55-1. Very good. With Dak Prescott, he goes 29-15. and 15. Very good. And with Cooper Rush, he went 5-1. and one. What's the common denominator? Colin, he got fired. So did Pete Carroll twice, Tom Landry, Bill Belichick, and Andy Reid. <laughs> Being fired is not the end of the world. Now, I would say in the NFL, we would have to agree that Bill Belichick, it's the truth, right? He's the most accomplished current coach. Got all the rings. Tom Brady's the most accomplished quarterback. You can't argue it. I do believe today, because the NFL has pivoted to offense, that Andy Reid is the current best coach in the league. And I also think there are three other offensive coaches that we hold in very high esteem and should. Sean Payton, Kyle Shanahan, and Sean McVay. Imperfect, really, really smart guys. But are you all comfortable acknowledging that Mike McCarthy is in the next group of Pete Carroll, Mike Tomlin, John Harbaugh, Mike McCarthy, and Doug Peterson, Super Bowl winners who have clearly been able to more than once Build a winning football culture. Yeah, I know. You're not comfortable with that. <laughs> and I've had my criticisms, for the record, of Pete Carroll. I think he can be a little stubborn at times. Mike Tomlin, a little tone deaf with offense. I think Sean McVay can get a tad cute at times. I wish he ran more. Uh, sometimes Shanahan's a little too tied to his system. So there are no perfect coaches. But if you look at the coaching tier... In the NFL today, most accomplished Bill, best now Andy, offensive gurus McVay, Peyton, Shanahan. Then it's five dudes who have won Super Bowls, hoisted trophies, all of them for the record. You know, I mean, Peterson is the only one that can say, I won with a backup. I mean, don't we consider Tomlin, Peterson, McCarthy, Harbaugh, Pete Carroll? I know you want to push back on McCarthy. And my takeaway is, he won with Cooper Rush. It's the best Dak I've seen. It's arguably the best Aaron was. He was good at the end with Favre. And by the way, he's made, and he's known as a passing guy over a running guy, he has made this CD lamb dak combo top three in the league. Can't deny it. You watch it every Sunday. I do. So, you know, I just keep coming back to this. He just keeps winning. Three months ago, I didn't think Dak was going to play like this. I didn't think Dallas was going to blow out seven teams. But you get new information. Did you think Dallas would blow out seven teams this year? Did you think CeeDee Lamb and Dak would become a top two to three combo in the league? Did you think Dallas looks like they could go to Philly and outplay them, lose close, probably be favored the next time they faced them? I didn't, but it's new information. Mike McCarthy's better than we want to acknowledge. He's imperfect, like all of them. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.